It's the people. How often do you get a double booking on your schedule? Probably uh, once a week at least. Versus the home care giants. That is neglect of care. The system is not run for the clients, it's run for profit. What they're doing is wrong. Premier Ford, Ontarians want answers. They've decided that they're just going to warehouse more older people. That breaks my heart. The fight for better care starts now. We're kind of booking it here. Are you always on the go like this? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Usually I'm running at least a few minutes behind. We're on the road, following healthcare workers taking a risk talking to us. There's a huge need for this kind of work, and it should be valued more. They work for some of Canada's largest home care companies. Their employers don't know they're letting us tag along. I think that they need to come out in the field with us and see what's happening. They're called PSWs, personal support workers. They care for the most vulnerable inside their homes. Uh, what can you tell us about the first person you're seeing? He's in his 60s and he is terminally ill with a brain tumor. So I have to get him up and in his wheelchair. She has MS. I cook her a meal and do little tasks like that around the house for her. They say home care like this is in crisis. You know, the light has been shone on long-term care, but home care has been sort of left behind in the dust. Our mission, to find out whether a home care system driven by profits... OK, I see you're turning. Are we here? ..is costing us all. Hi. How are you? Willie Foreman is faced with an impossible choice. I had promised that we wouldn't use a nursing home, but it's just, I, I just can't do it anymore. Six years ago, her husband Robert suffered a massive stroke. Paralyzed, he needed home care. Paramed is assigned to provide that care. It's a for-profit company promising a customized plan to preserve independence. But Willie says it didn't deliver. Missed visits, care from people that didn't have the skills, the inconsistency of people, I had to train them. And for Robert, how did that affect him? Well, it, it certainly didn't do anything for his dignity. You know, all these strangers having to clean him up and, and diaper him and dress him and shower him. So you must have complained about this. Oh, <laughs> yeah. They, they, uh, I had to sometimes turn off my call display or they wouldn't answer my phone calls. I would just sit there and, you know, I'd cry after. She has no choice but to move Robert into a hospital while he waits for a spot in a nursing home. I mean, I miss having him at home. Robert misses it too. Would you rather be at home? Oh, yeah. Okay. I see that all the time. Dr. Samir Sinha is a leading geriatrician and consults on health policy. They're not there because they couldn't figure it out. They're there because our system failed them. A system Canadians say they need. In a national survey, almost every single person over 65 said they plan to age at home as long as possible. A choice that makes financial sense too. To care for a patient in hospital is over $700 a day. Long-term care, about 200. Home care for a high needs person costs less than 100. So you don't have to be a mathematician to realize that the care that most people actually want is actually the most cost effective for the taxpayer. The solution? Invest more in home care instead of building more nursing homes. That's what he told the Ontario government, but he says they didn't listen. We committed $6.4 billion to build 30,000 new long-term care beds by 2028. I thought, wait a minute, like this doesn't make any sense. If home care is what people want, why aren't we investing more in it? Well, how do the developers make their money? Honestly. When we say yes to building Ontario, we can accomplish great things. You're saying our approach is driven by developers and their bottom line. That's why we build long-term care and we don't support home care sufficiently. 
Yeah, I mean, if I want to be absolutely crass, I'll say our current approach now, in my view, is actually focused more on supporting business as of supporting individuals. Developers aren't the only ones cashing in. Companies like Paramed are too. Last year, it made nearly 32 million in profits. That doesn't sit well with this PSW. He works for Paramed. We've agreed not to reveal his name to protect his job. The pay should be better. We're taking care of people's loved ones, so I think we should start at $20. Like, that just seems like common sense. What does it start at now? It's not a lot more than minimum wage. <laughs> Surprising, but true. Ontario PSWs working in home care start at $16.50 an hour. The same job in a nursing home starts at $19 an hour, even more in a hospital. I think a lot of people just look at it as a dead-end job. On top of that, they're only paid for the actual time they spend with a client. Hi, good, thanks. Um, I'm just letting you know I should be there tonight around uh, 9.30. He has to check in with the people he cares for every day, but doesn't get paid for that time or for all the time spent driving from client to client. Do they map it out to try to keep places close together? Or? No, they often don't really think about keeping things clustered together. Just check out his route on the day we followed. This is a ludicrous system. Natalie Mara heads up the Ontario Health Coalition, an advocacy group fighting to remove profits from care. Is the quality of care that for-profit companies is providing really inferior to the not-for-profit? Across the board in home care, there is not enough funding going to the actual front lines. What we do know is that the for-profits take their markup from the difference between what they pay people and the amount of money that they're paid. Across Canada, home care is publicly funded, but how it's delivered is a mishmash. Some provinces and territories deliver public home care themselves. Others also contract both not-for-profit and for-profit companies. No one has privatized to the extent that Ontario has done. All of that administration has to be paid for. It's paid for out of public dollars. Then they're Profits have to be paid for. That has to be paid for out of public dollars. It makes a difference for workers too. In Saskatchewan, where the government delivers home care, PSWs make about $7 an hour more. It's appalling. This PSW's clients find the care they often get appalling too. The last client I have of the evening has been very frustrated that he's not getting visits on time or not at all. He has mobility issues and this is a huge concern of his. The weekends are by far the worst and that's when the PSW staff books off. He's too nervous to show his face, fears it'll affect the care he does get. What happens when they don't show up? Ultimately, in sheer frustration, I get up on my own, taking the risk. And listen to this. One reason some visits might get missed, Paramed schedules him to see two different people at the same time. How often do you get a double booking on your schedule? Probably uh, once a week at least. I'll have a, I'll, I'll look at my schedule and it'll be overlapped or double booked. Well, why would the company do that? They can make double what they make in an hour sometimes and they're shorting the, the client. Penny Moore in London, Ontario knows all about missed home care visits. I would love to have a call to say they're not coming. No one from Pyramid showed up for her last four appointments. So you haven't had a shower? Since the 11th. For over two weeks? Yeah. What is that like? Um, excuse me. Oh, it's upsetting. Clients actually give up on calling in to complain because it's become normal, normalized in home care. Do you think the company is still billing for that visit? Yes, yeah. The ways in which it happens can be um, people don't complain and therefore it's not marked. The companies purposefully or not purposefully don't track very well and they get paid anyway. Even though nobody showed up? No care delivered, but the money still flows. So just how many visits do home care companies miss and still get paid for? We try to find out. This Auditor General's report says home care companies do not have to report how often they miss visits. How do they know how often that happens then? Well, good question if no one's tracking it. It also says the government doesn't involve itself 
in resolving any of these complaints. Now, you tried to find out about that, right? Well, they said it could take months to get this data, but they also said if we wanted to know about the companies involved in the complaints, that they'd have to get the company's permission. The company's permission, even though it's public dollars? Wow. We've been working for weeks to reach Paramed. We try again in person. Hi, it's Erica Johnson calling from CBC Marketplace. We've been talking to some clients who are getting home care from Paramed. Paramed is owned by Extendicare, a national long-term care conglomerate. We'd like to talk to someone about those issues. We've been happy to stay connected over email. Thank okay. you very much. But we're right here. Oh, she hung up. Wow. Next, fighting for answers. I don't owe you an explanation. You haven't lived up to your commitments as a home care provider. And around the world, who's getting home care right? These aren't pie in the sky ideas. This is your marketplace. We're investigating Canada's home care crisis. Trevor McLean and his mom Maxine are up against another home care giant, Bayshore. So that's a copy of the Bayshore promise that they give to families before they provide home care. Just give me a yes or no as to whether or not you got these things. They say they will have a person available to answer your call 24 hours a day. No. Be provided with a care plan. No. no. Receive a timely response to request for service. No. no. So all of these promises were broken? Yes. Uh, you might as well uh, flush her down the toilet. I'm disgusted with them. I'm absolutely disgusting. Trevor is a former PSW. We knew it was wrong. Others don't. So I'm here to advocate on behalf of my dad. Had a big heart. He was very family orientated. He was always singing. You say you met your soulmate? I met my soulmate. After a battle with blood cancer, Mike McLean was discharged from the Ottawa hospital and into Bayshore's palliative care. I was told that I would have all the help I needed. Instead, the burden of care fell to the family. When the nurses were there, they said, well, you're a medical background. You know how to do these procedures. And we explained to them, we don't want my dad to be my patient. I want him to be my dad. And they said, well, we don't have enough staff. Bayshore did send a kit described as end-of-life medications to ease the transition to death. Once given, patients often don't wake again. And what did they say should be done with them? They expected my daughter to inject their father with these drugs. My daughter was an RN, and it had to be an RN or a doctor. They said that, um, you're a healthcare family. You've seen people die before. I said, well, you can just forget it. You know, I have been with clients who I've had who have passed away at home while I was with them, and then I'd have to go to the next client. PSW Gwen Stokes works for Bayshore, has cared for families put in the same position. What have you seen? I've seen fear, absolutely. I, I've seen people overcome. I think that's a, an unreasonable request. When Mike eventually died six weeks later, the McLeans called Bayshore looking for help, but were again left on their own. So she calls back about 15 minutes later and she says, you have to immediately start CPR and call 911 and have an ambulance come. And I said, uh, I don't think you realize that we are way past the point of any kind of resuscitation. He is... He's, he's dead, but I need the doctor to come and say that. And they wouldn't, they wouldn't do it. For over a week leading up to his death, no one came by and checked in on him. Oh my gosh, that is horrible. That is uh, neglect of care. It's people's lives. You know, it's not just the people that they're treating, it's us, the families that are left over, that are broken. Maxine filed a complaint with Bayshore. A year later, she has yet to hear back. Please leave us a message. Hi, it's Maxine McLean calling. I left a complaint at least a year ago. Maybe you folks with your program can get somebody to listen and see that what they're doing is wrong. 
How much longer can you keep doing this? As a matter of fact, tomorrow is my last day. You're getting I, out. I'm out, yeah. There are just too many negatives, too many things that I, I'm not able to overcome. What did Bayshore say when you let them know you were leaving? They didn't call me. They didn't ask me why. You would think with the shortage of PSWs, I was absolutely stunned and very hurt. It's a bitter goodbye for the patients who rely on her care. We've been trying to get answers from Bayshore for weeks. I can only pass along your message. A lot of people rely on the home care delivered by your company, and nobody will talk to us. Yeah. I'll make sure that our communication manager gets this information, OK? No call back, but later we get an email telling us to talk to Home Care Ontario, the association that represents Bayshore. Paramed says the association will speak on its behalf, too. No luck getting an interview, but they did send us a statement saying home care is in a staffing crisis and they need the government's help to pay staff more money. I think the pandemic has only just amplified the problems that we had before. But Dr. Sinha says the bigger problem, how much the government spends building nursing homes, how little it spends on home care. In Ontario, we spend two thirds of our funding warehousing people, you know, in nursing homes. Denmark did a monumental shift. They did an aggressive policy to expand and provide good, high quality home care. So Denmark's the gold star. Want to go on a trip? Let's do it. Scandinavia, here we come. A shocking comparison. We actually have the resources to help those who need a lot of help. And why Canada won't do more? With such limited funding, why is so much of it going to for-profit companies? This is your marketplace. We've come to Denmark to see how it's getting home care right. It's a system that had the same problems that we had in Canada, but they took a completely different approach. Back in the late 80s, it stopped the rapid growth of nursing homes and focused on improving home care delivered by the government. Was it a risky move that paid off? I don't think it was a risky move at all. I think it was based on applied common sense and preserving dignity and respect. It all means lots of support to help keep people independent at home. To see it in action, we head southwest of Copenhagen, where Johnny gets rehab with a trained PSW twice a week. <laughs> the, goal, the goal is to strengthen his legs. The idea? Spend on prevention. Keep him out of more expensive long-term care. It's a program overseen by Camila Hovalan. Hello, welcome to Denmark. She manages home care for the region, says everyone here also gets a visit when they turn 80. To say, hey, how are you? Do you need some help? Or are you actually doing it very fine yourself? What's the payoff? That we actually have the resources to help those who need a lot of help, like 10 hours per day. Did you catch that? People here can get up to 10 hours of home care a day. In Canada, you are lucky if you get three hours a day. Yeah. Another difference in Denmark? I've mean, noticed these places are all one level. Yeah, no, because they're built without stairs and they're built to allow you to Asian place. Communities of small houses for rent designed yeah, to keep well, those well, needing care well, independent. Yeah. Take a look at this door, Erica. It's very wide. This allows you to get your wheelchair and walker through, right? Let's look at this bathroom. Another one of those wide doors. And you can see that your showering area, there's no bathtub here that if you have mobility issues, you have to climb in and out of. So people might say they look great, but how are we going to afford that in Canada? You can't afford not to have this sort of accommodation because nursing homes are really expensive operations. Next, we head west to a development that's caught the world's attention, the house of generations. <laughs> Here, children, adults, and folks needing care all live under one roof. How can you not love this, right? Community that breaks isolation. People can help each other. The whole idea is to enjoy all your life. 
My best friend is Johanna. She is 90 years old. Apartments have mobility aids built in, and home care is available on site. How often do you have somebody come in? Six, seven times in a day. These aren't pie in the sky ideas. We're physically seeing them here in Denmark, and they're actually all practical and achievable. You made recommendations to the Ontario government about how things could improve. Yeah, they ignored it, and they've decided that they're just going to warehouse more older people. That breaks my heart. Back in Canada, we're still fighting for answers. And learn Ontario's Premier is giving a press conference and taking questions, but not ours. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Well, we were told we could come to this press conference, yep. and then we were locked out. When you guys got here, it already started. I don't know you an explanation. Is that him? Premier Ford, Ontarians want answers. I guess that's his answer. But a couple weeks later, another shot. At Bayshore's own offices, the Minister of Health is making an announcement. Simply put, an investment in our nurses is an investment in our future. A Bayshore national director is here. So is the head of Home Care Ontario and our marketplace producer. Experts say for-profit shouldn't be part of home care. With such limited funding, why is so much of it going to for-profit companies? Bayshore provides excellent care, as do many of the other private providers. And our government is going to continue to make investments in home care. I'd love to get a question in with you about the home care companies. We've spoken to people who say that you haven't lived up to your commitments as a home care provider. What do you have to say to them? The door closes on us, but not on this issue. We're staying on the case. Send us your home care stories. Marketplace at cbc.ca.